Hello! Welcome to the training video on preparing scientific data for archiving and sharing. This video is broken up into three separate parts. Part 1 covers topics that should be considered when planning a project with data sharing in mind. These include what the NIDLA requirements for data sharing are, what we mean by data, why data sharing is important, the components of a data management plan, and language to use and avoid when crafting informed consent documents for your institutional review board. Part 2 covers topics involved with preparing the data and documentation to be shared. This includes a discussion of the various formats of data that can be shared, how to structure your data files, what type of documentation should accompany your data, naming conventions for variables, and an overview of how to handle restricted or sensitive data. Part 3 covers the actual data sharing process, including an overview of the Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research, or ICPSR, which is NIDLR's preferred repository for data sharing, how to identify a repository that follows best practices, a walkthrough of ICPSR's data deposit process, and data citation or data usage features available through ICPSR. Let's begin with part one, planning for data sharing. To start, we want to outline the data sharing requirements for NIDLR grantees. Beginning October 1st, 2017, all research funded by NIDLR falls within the Administration for Community Living, or ACL, requirements for public access to scientific data. The ACL Public Access Plan lists the following requirements. Data must be publicly available no later than 24 months after an award's end date. Data must be stored in such a way that enables both retrieval and meaningful use by interested parties at no cost. All scientific data that result from an award must be made publicly available. If an award funds more than one research project, or a research project generates more than one type of scientific data, all data sets from all projects must be made publicly available. Each data set must have a Digital Object Identifier, or DOI, for future reference and citation. In the final report for your award, you must include the DOIs for all data sets, as well as the release date for your data if you choose to embargo them. This means that you must deposit your data at a repository before submitting your final report. The Public Access Plan identifies ICPSR as the preferred repository for NIDLR-funded research. ICPSR is a data repository housed at the University of Michigan and is capable of satisfying the requirements for data sharing outlined in the ACL Public Access Plan including providing a DOI for each data set and giving the option to researchers to embargo their deposited data for up to 24 months. More detailed information about ICPSR will be provided in Part 3 of this video. A link to the website containing the ACL Public Access Plan can be found in the References section below this video. Now that you know the data sharing requirements for NIDLR-funded research, it is important to understand what is meant by the term data for the purpose of public access, and particularly what data must be shared to meet the ACL requirements. According to the ACL Public Access Plan, scientific data are defined as digitally recorded, factual material commonly accepted in the scientific community as necessary to validate research findings, including data sets used to support scholarly publications. In general, scientific data that should be shared include the raw data you collect from any NIDLR funded project, any data that you derive or construct from other original data, 
For example, if you develop a composite variable by summing the values of several other variables in a dataset, that new composite variable should be included in what is shared. The metadata should also be shared. Metadata refers to information and documentation that makes the data more usable or easier to understand. This includes documents like a codebook, a user guide, any descriptions of created or derived variables, information about sampling and weighting procedures, and information about the study itself. These elements will be discussed in greater detail in part two of this video. It is important to note that personally identifiable information, or PII, is not typically included in data that are shared. There are some instances where certain identifying information is necessary so that the value of the data for secondary users is not compromised. But for the most part, only de-identified data should be shared, and only de-identified data are required to be shared under the ACL Public Access Plan. Ways to de-identify a data set prior to sharing it will also be discussed in part two of this video. Elements of the research process that do not constitute scientific data and do not need to be shared include lab notebooks, preliminary analyses, drafts of scientific papers or manuscripts, plans for future research, peer review reports, communications with research team members or other colleagues, and physical objects like lab specimens. There are some data that are exceptions to the ACL Public Access Plan. These include personally identifiable data, any proprietary trade data, and any other data whose release is limited by law, regulation, security requirements, or policy. If you have questions about whether your data are included in one of these exceptions, you should contact your program officer at NIDLER. There are many reasons that researchers would want to share their data. One reason to share your data is that it is required. Funding agencies within the government, academic institutions, and journals are all increasingly requiring affiliated researchers to share their data as a condition for continued funding or publication. In February of 2013, the Director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy, John Holdren, released a memo that directed all federal agencies with an annual research and development budget over $100 million to develop a public access plan for disseminating the results of their research. Sharing data also improves the return on investment for public money. It allows more people to utilize data that have already been collected. It also broadens the impact of research funding and makes research funding more efficient. Another reason to share data is to benefit science. The scientific process involves building off of previous studies and results. Data sharing encourages transparency, which is important to verify results and ensure their validity across space and time. Data sharing is also quickly becoming the new norm in many disciplines. A search on data sharing in the New England Journal of Medicine returns 564 manuscripts from the past five years alone. For the original researchers, sharing data allows more people to use their data set. This increases the impact of the original researchers' work. Researchers who share data also receive credit or attribution for their work through data citation. Increasingly, institutions are allowing data products to be included in reports that demonstrate the impact of researchers' work. This can be especially important when applying for tenure and promotion, as well as to show current and prospective funding agencies the productivity of funding the researchers' projects. Often, the data use agreement by which secondary users must abide includes a requirement that the data must be cited in the secondary users' publications. Another benefit of sharing data at a repository like ICPSR 
is that it allows data usage metrics to be captured so that researchers can easily access information about secondary usage of their data. For secondary users, having data already collected and available minimizes the resources they have to use for their own research projects. Since they do not have to spend time collecting the data, this may reduce the time for new findings and accelerate new discoveries. Additionally, as research budgets are being stretched more and more and grants are becoming increasingly competitive, sharing data helps researchers who may not otherwise have the opportunity to gather the data necessary for their projects due to funding limitations. Secondary users can also bring unique perspectives to the data to expand their usage and utilize the data in new and important ways. Sharing data helps reduce scientific inefficiency by allowing researchers to see what others have already done and avoid duplicating their efforts. By seeing what others have done, secondary users can build upon others' work to advance science more rapidly. Sharing data also allows researchers to increase sample sizes by combining data resources, which can be particularly valuable for studying smaller subpopulations. Lastly, instructors are able to access the data to incorporate into their lessons to enhance undergraduate and graduate training. Now that you know your requirements for sharing data and the benefits of data sharing, Let's talk about practical considerations to keep in mind as you plan to archive and share your data. Each of these points will be discussed in the following slides. But to give an overview, you will want to write and finalize your data management plan. Include your intent and approach for data sharing with your institutional review board submission. And make sure that you add language about sharing data to your informed consent documents. A data management plan is a written document that describes how researchers will provide for long-term preservation of and access to scientific data in digital formats. As a Nidler grantee, you are required to submit a data management plan as outlined in the ACL Public Access Plan. What needs to be included in the data management plan that you submit to Nidler? First, there needs to be a description of the types and format of the data that you will collect, including a description of how they will be organized, stored, and preserved. For example, will you be collecting data through surveys, interviews, focus groups? Will the data be stored as an Excel spreadsheet, audio or video file? Will they be stored on your computer, external hard drive, you must also include a description of the documentation and metadata that will be included as part of your submission to a repository. Again, documentation and metadata refer to information that describes the data, such as a codebook that describes your variables and how the data are coded, survey instruments or question text, user guides for the data, descriptions of weighting or sampling procedures, calculations for created or derived variables, and other related information that helps to understand the data and how they can be used. If ICPSR is the repository you choose for data sharing, you must indicate this in your data management plan. If you do not choose ICPSR, you must provide a justification in the plan for why you chose a different repository. You must explain why the other repository would be more appropriate than ICPSR for the type of data you collected, and ensure that it is comparable to ICPSR in terms of industry standards. Your data management plan must also include a description of the process for obtaining study participants' consent, which will be discussed in the next few slides. You must also indicate the estimated cost to implement the data management plan which is allowed as part of the award's direct costs. When you submit your study to your Institutional Review Board, or IRB, you should indicate your intent to share the data. IRBs differ across institutions in what they require researchers to submit, 
but it is best practice to be as transparent as possible to your IRB about how data will be collected and shared. In addition to information in your data management plan, your IRB may ask you to provide answers to other questions about your methods to protect the identity of study participants. Ultimately, your IRB must approve your informed consent document, which provides information to study participants about how the information they provide to you as part of the study will be used and shared. It is important to ensure that you have IRB approval to share your data through a repository before you begin collecting data. To clarify informed consent a bit more, informed consent refers to the communication process that allows individuals to make informed choices about participating in a research study. As part of the document that you provide to participants, you will want to be sure to include an assurance that the data will be de-identified prior to sharing so that participants' identities will be protected. You should convey as much information as possible about the process of handling data from the start to finish of the project. For example, tell participants who will have access to the raw data that may contain identifying information, such as members of the research team, how these data will be stored, and explain that you will protect their identity before sharing the data with other researchers outside of the research team. It is important to avoid using language that would unnecessarily prohibit or limit the sharing of data with sponsors or other researchers. The goal of this document is to inform participants about the study and how the information they provide will be used, stored, and shared. Overall, be honest with them that you will share the data with others, but assure them that you will take all the necessary actions to make sure their identity is protected. This is just one example of recommended language to include in a consent form. It is important to note that this is not the only information that should be included in the consent form, and there are many ways to phrase consent forms to still allow data sharing. The ICPSR website provides several recommendations on language to use and language to avoid when crafting these documents. Additionally, your own IRB is likely a good resource to ask questions to regarding what should and should not be included in your consent forms to ensure that you can share your data. You can see in this example, in the first two sentences, that the researchers are explicit that the data may be shared with other researchers, but that the data will only be used in ways that protect participants' identities. Importantly, the researchers do not use any language or make any guarantees that would prevent them from sharing the data. To recap, it is in your best interest to consult with your own IRB early on about any special requirements that they may have for sharing data. This can be done even before submitting your Nidler proposal so that you can prepare your data management plan accordingly. What we have provided to you are general guidelines, but ultimately each IRB may vary in what information they require researchers to provide to both the IRB and to study participants to ensure data sharing is allowed. ICPSR has a variety of online resources on topics like data management plans, data confidentiality, informed consent language, and IRBs. Links to these resources can be found in the references section below this video. To conclude part one of this video, we want to remind you that the sooner you consider data sharing in the research process, the easier it will be at the end. Consulting with Nidler, your IRB, and ICPSR at the start of your project will minimize issues that may occur later on in the data collection or data sharing processes.